Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, it's been just about a month now that we've had our Idaho pasture pigs, and I wanted to do a video to show you what we've learned about these guys in the first month that we've had them. We are just absolutely excited about having them here on our farm, and I really do think that these are gonna be an awesome solution for us, and hopefully for you guys as well. We're gonna go around today, and I'm gonna show you the three pens that we have. These are our two sows, we have a boar, so we're gonna be breeding, we're gonna have piglets born in the spring, but we also have three piglets that we're raising up for food this year. We're gonna go over and see them as well because I've learned different things about each of the pigs and I wanna go over those with you so you can make a good decision, a wise decision for what will be right for your homestead. All right, let's start with the girls. So let's start by talking about our girls here. This is Mildred and that's Myrtle. These are the two pigs that we bought as breeders so that we can have babies in the spring. Right off the bat, the one thing that I've noticed about these guys is that they definitely live up to their reputation of not being big rooters. Since we've had them here, they've really done minimal amounts of rooting around in the ground. Uh, the stuff that they have rooted up has just kind of been on the surface. But I can tell you in comparison to other pigs that we've raised for meat, uh, by the time they got to be this size, they were doing so much damage to the ground that by the time they were gone for the year, uh, it, they had just destroyed pretty much everything. These guys aren't doing that at all. They're just they're really grazing. They're going out and they're finding the few things that are already alive already and they're they're grazing and they are rooting up just the very surface but not much beyond that. The other thing that I've noticed is just how gentle these guys are. Other pigs that we've had when we've gotten them to this size, you know that you get in the pen with them and they're kind of pushing you around and they're being you know, they're being kind of ornery, but, but these girls are just so gentle and you can be in with them and other than trying to eat your shoes every once in a while, they're, they're really just gentle pigs. They sleep a lot. <laughs> I think they sleep probably more than other pigs that we've had. Uh, but then they get up and they spend, you know, some time, I'd say every couple hours, I see them out, you know, walking around, finding something to eat. Uh, we are not free feeding them. Now we're just feeding them twice a day. We're giving them both about two to two and a half pounds of feed in the morning and about two or two and a half pounds of feed in the evening. It's about five pounds per pig uh, total per day. I want to talk to you guys about the feeding stations that I built for the pigs. I built one for each of the three pens and now that we've had them for a while and we've been using them every day, I want to show you how they're working out and tell you my thoughts on the design. Let's go over by Charlie. I want to introduce you guys to Charlie, our boar, and we'll look at his feeding station. Okay girls, you can go back to sleep now. Well, we showed you guys in the first video we did before we even got the pigs about the shelters we were building for them. Charlie didn't really like his too much. He tore the top off of it. We used this really heavy vinyl material, which I thought would be fine, and he just tore it right off. Now the baby pigs, they haven't touched theirs, but for some reason Charlie 
I guess he didn't like those people smiling at him on the inside. These used to be billboards and there were people smiling. So I don't know, he didn't like it. So we had to move something else in there for him. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm sorry to disturb your nap, Charlie. Charlie likes to use his feeding station here as a bed. This is where he likes to sleep. When I come out here, he's sound asleep. Up. I don't know if he's just waiting for the next time I bring him food or if he likes being up off the ground. You're a good boy, Charlie. This is one thing I really love about these pigs is just how friendly they are. And Charlie is super friendly and he loves to be scratched. Yeah, don't you, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, you're a good boy. Alright, let's go in by Charlie and take a closer look at his feeding station. We do need to make sure we lock his gate because he really wants to get over by those girls. Hi. One thing that I love about these pigs is how vocal they are. None of the other pigs we've ever raised have been nearly as vocal as these Idaho pasture pigs. It just cracks me up. They're just constantly making noises. Yeah, aren't you, Charlie? You're always talking to me. Yeah. Now, Charlie is quite a bit bigger than the girls, but just as gentle. I'm in here with him every day. I come in and spend time with him, and he just, I mean, he never tries to push you around. He doesn't, he's not trying to chew on you. I mean, just really a really gentle pig, especially for his size. And you can see his area here, uh, you know, there's not a lot of things growing because it's been winter, but he has not done a whole lot of rooting in this area, which again, with his size, I would have thought by now he'd have this place completely torn up, but he just hasn't done that. Let's talk about the feeding station. I got the idea for this design from actually from the uh, people that we bought the pigs from. Uh, they had something very similar to this. I came home and made some that, you know, based on what I had seen at their place, and I absolutely love it. So thank you, Cindy and Dwayne, for the awesome idea. Basically, it's just a platform to get them up off the ground just enough that when you're feeding them, they stay dry. They're not rooting the food into the uh, dirt. You're not having to feed them in a pan that they can tip over and I mean this has just worked out so well. So it's basically a wood platform. I built a trough here where I feed him and then we've got these watering cups. Now there's one change that I've made to the watering cups. Uh, originally my plan was to run them off of a gravity feed with these barrels but there's just not enough pressure. So I have run hoses over here to run them, but basically the way it works is that Charlie will come up, all the pigs are trained on him, even our feeder pigs, and they just come up and they push their nose against this little button here. Can't see it because he's in the way. Charlie, you're blocking the camera. He thinks that's funny. <laughs> I think he did laugh a little bit. Charlie, you gotta move out of the way for a minute, okay? Yeah, you got. He I wants know. a scratch. I know, you want your butt scratched again. <laughs> okay, so basically they come up and he'll push his nose against here and that will fill this little cup up with water and that's what they drink out of. And you can st see that it keeps things nice and dry. He gets just enough water and it doesn't make a big mess, which is the problem we've had with our pigs in the past. In the past, we've used the nipple waterers on the bottom of a barrel, but the pigs, what they would do is they would learn that if they stood there and kept their mouth on it, that they could make basically a big mud hole right below the waterer, and so they would do that on purpose to make a wallow. This keeps things much drier and much cleaner, and I think it's gonna be much healthier for the pigs as well. So I'm super happy with that. 
Uh, I think down the road I will try again with gravity fed because I don't like having to run. It's, it's literally probably 500 feet of hose to get it over here. So um, I'll need to build some stands though. I think if these barrels were up higher, uh, there would be enough water pressure, but having them just like I have them here, there just wasn't enough pressure. The water did come out, but the problem was that the pigs would have to hold the button in for a long time because it just came out so slowly. So if we had the barrels up and there was more pressure, I think it would be a good system. Yeah, that's your new house, Charlie. Now, I was showing you guys a little while ago that Charlie ripped the top off of his shelter that we built him. The shelter is still here, but he completely ripped the tarp off the top. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use some uh, barn tin to go across the top, some metal across the top, in hopes that he'll leave that alone. But for now, what I did is I moved in one of our portable goat shelters. Now that we've gotten rid of our goats, we didn't need this one anyway. And he's just been sleeping in there. So, um, like I said, 99% of the time when I come out here, he's sleeping up on his feeding station. Uh, the only time I've ever seen him even in here is the other day when it was raining for a little while, but otherwise he's perfectly content outside even if it's cold. So, so I am super happy. I'll tell you that before we got these guys, I was very intimidated by the thought of having a big male pig and the size of these guys is just absolutely perfect. <laughs> Let's head over to the last pen, our feeder pigs. I want to show you how well they're doing, show you how fast they're growing, and talk to you about just a few things that we're learning about them. Now we're down in our feeder pig pen. We're still working to tame these guys up. They're not very tame yet, but they're getting better. They'll at least come up to me now and they'll sniff me and let me touch them a little bit. So we're, we're making progress. So I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk to you guys about, uh, first of all, just kind of a review of what these Idaho pasture pigs are and why we decided that they were gonna be a great fit for our homestead. So the Idaho pasture pigs are a registered breed of pigs. They're originally bred from three different types of pigs. They were a mix of Duroc, Berkshire, and Cooney Cooney pigs. So the Berkshire and the Duroc are pretty classic meat pigs, which give these guys their great shape. The Cooney Coonies are also a meat pig, but they're much smaller. But the nice thing about the Cooney Coonies is that they have more of an upturned nose, which makes them a great grazing pig. By their nose being turned up, they don't root nearly as much, and instead they walk around and they graze on the things that are on top of the ground. So that characteristic is what you're really looking for in these Idaho pasture pigs. Now the great thing that they benefit from being mixed with the meat pigs is that they still grow very fast. That was the main thing that sold us on this breed. If they live up to their name, what should happen is that these guys should get up to the 200 to 250 pound range, which is the perfect butcher size, in about the same amount of time as a classic meat pig, about eight to 10 months. But they don't get as big as a regular meat pig further down the road. So like the sows and our boar that you saw, that's about as big as they'll get. About 300 to 350 pounds for the sows and about 400 to 450 pounds for the boar. Unlike regular meat pigs or you know classic meat pigs that get more in the like seven, eight, nine hundred pound range, these guys will stay smaller and are just going to be a lot easier to handle. That was the one thing that had always kept us from wanting to raise pigs or breed our own, is just the sheer size and kind of intimidation factor of the really big breeder pigs. It's okay. 
See, they're getting better. They're getting better. They're still pretty skittish when I move, though. I need to start bringing down some marshmallows. If you want a fast way to tame pigs, it's bring them marshmallows. They absolutely love them. Now, I don't encourage you to make that a main part of their food, but just for taming them, it's a great way to do it. So a couple characteristics of these guys that we are just really enjoying. They're so playful. We've had, um, we've raised, you know, other pigs for years now. And every spring we get, you know, feeders and we bring them home. But they never play like this. These guys are almost like having puppies. I come out here in the morning and I'm doing my chores. And they'll just be running laps around here in and out of their house and chasing each other around. And it's just hilarious to watch. And you can see, even at this young age, just the nice shape that they have. I mean, once you start raising your own animals for food, you look at them a little differently than you do as pets. Like, when I see these guys, I see bacon and those nice hams, and man, they just have such a nice shape, even at this young age. So, I'm very excited about having these. Uh, We've had them for about a month now, and I can tell you that they've definitely grown. They're not tame enough yet for me to be able to get a tape measure around them to actually weigh them, but I can tell just looking at them that they have grown quite a bit already in that month. Now, two of these guys already have names. The, the blonde one is named Pickles. Our daughter Samantha named that one. The spotted one, his name is Herbert. Our daughter Grace named that one. And this black one, mostly black one, is supposed to be Sarah's the name, and she still hasn't come up with a name. So, give her some good ideas. I named the three that we're keeping for breeders, so... Well, Charlie already had a name when we got him. But Sarah needs a name for this one. Now, their feeding station is working out well also. But I think pretty soon I'm going to do away with these automatic feeders. They actually have such an amazing appetite that I haven't been free feeding them. I've been weighing out their food every day. I'm giving them about 5 pounds of feed each per day. So about 15 pounds total for these three. Plus treats in between. Uh, but with the automatic feeders, it just seems like they're wasting a lot of food right now. So I'm going to build them a bigger trough and just feed them in the trough every day. Just like we do the other pigs. And I think they'll waste a lot less. I keep forgetting that I can't pet them yet. Hi, Pickles. Well, we haven't decided yet if we're going to breed our sows this summer so we have a batch of fall piglets, or if we're going to wait and first breed them for the first time in the spring. They've both already had two litters, so we know that they're good breeders, but we just haven't bred them ourselves yet. I don't know if there will be enough interest in baby pigs in the fall. Uh, if any of you are interested, let us know. That might help us make a decision what to do, but we're excited to get our first baby piglets born on the homestead. And you can see they're trained on the automatic water or the same way. And it really makes things a lot less messy. So there you go, guys. Idaho pasture pigs. Is it possible that these really are the ultimate homestead pig? I think it just might be. We're excited to have these guys here. We're excited to watch them grow. And we're excited to breed the other ones down the road. If you have questions about these pigs, uh, let us know in the comment section below. We'd be happy to answer questions as we go along. I can tell you already that I am just having a blast. If you've been watching us for any amount of time, you probably know that pigs are my absolute favorite animal to raise. And to have them now as permanent residents is going to be a real blast. If you're enjoying our videos, I sure hope that you will hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget, as always, the absolute best way that you can help our channel grow is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.